All right. Welcome to the DevSeek. Goodbye, Derek. <laughs> yes. Hello and goodbye. <laughs> all right. I've got to run. See you, right. Um, yeah. I'll catch you all later. See you. It is Wednesday, the 29th of September, um, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, who wants to go first? Vice says. Yeah, cool. Oh, I just had to. I had to do math. Minus one is it's really complicated. It <laughs> at this time yeah, of the so morning. My, so my mark two. Uh, I brought it up on my on my hotspot again, uh, but it has uh, come up with a uh, build date of nine twenty nine. So, um, did they change anything that makes it worthwhile for me to try to reconnect my local net, or did they not? No, nothing's changed on the on the Wi on the Wi Fi front. Okay. Yeah. Did you gotten back to you? Did you get? Have you had any more? Yeah, I sent them all his log files. Okay. How long ago was that? Yeah, he asked for the wrong files, but I I think he was a junior guy. But I I sent him what he really needs, as well as what he asked for. Was that Julian or? Uh, Who did get back to me on that? Or Sebastian, maybe. Anyway, um, how long ago was that though? If because if it's been too long, then I'll I'll give him a nudge. Well, you can give them a nudge, but. Okay, let's see. It's like it's Julian Hartmer. Hmm. Anyway, so that's uh that's one thing on that. Uh, just just feel free to like if they're not if they haven't responded in a few days or something like just feel free to nudge them and say hey you know any progress any progress. Um, you know, they're busy like all of okay. us. So. Well, I, I, yeah, I helped out in the Wake Word channel. There was a fellow that was having difficulty, and, and that's what I was getting at. He's running us on a PS3, right? So uh, we're on all kinds of devices. But anyway, he was having trouble with the Wake Word, so I tried to help him out with that a bit. I don't think I made that much of a difference, um, but at least he got some attention. I uh, attended the metrics meeting uh, yesterday, uh, which was interesting. And I got bogged down working on uh, converting this, uh, this runner into a module. I had a friend try to install it on Debian, and it didn't. And I'm very sensitive about it being cross-compatible across all working environments. So, you know, I'm a little skeptical about just releasing a runner module that only works on Ubuntu and doesn't work on Debian or Mac OS X or anything else. So <coughs> that's kind of where I'm at. And uh, yeah, that's that's it pretty much for me. I'll be working on that. Cool. Is it in the repo already or? No. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. If you want, if you want another tester, let me know. I will. Thank you. Um, since I'm already talking, um, we did do some updates to the. Uh, to the Mark II yesterday. Um, so the, the Wi-Fi Connect skill just got moved from the build recipe over to the um, Micro Skills repo so that it's being loaded in the same way as everything else. Um, I think that was the last the last skill that was uh, being installed by the build recipe. Um, so we now have that you know single list of this is what's on the device. Um, I reactivated the daily builds now that they're succeeding and um, Ken's clearly on the on the latest, and um, that's all working well. Uh, Chris, do you want to talk about the other changes that you pushed? Yeah, I've been mucking with the resting uh, screen. Um, so now there's, uh, if you got the skill update from yesterday, um, you should have two da- two timestamps on your screen right now. Um, if you're running in dev mode. Um, the build timestamp, which is always that uh, has always been there, and now the last time we updated the Mark II branch of the Microsoft Skills repo, which should be on a daily basis, um, or no no more frequent than a daily basis, let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> I guess there could be days where we don't have anything to, to push. Um, so yeah, so today I spent time. I, I submitted a PR um, with that logic in it um, because 
reviewed it. I've addressed your concerns, guys. So if you want to look at that again today. Cool. Um, we can get that pushed. Um, just so you guys know, basically, I, I'm i looking at the skills.json file to find out when the last time a skill was um, was updated or installed is. Um, that gets updated by MSM whenever it runs. Um, so and then there's, there's an install time and an update time in there. And basically, I, I look at both and figure out whatever the most recent time is for any skill in that in that file. Um, which actually made it easy because it was an existing file that had the information I needed. I just needed to read it and, and parse it. So, um, and I'm spending today, or I spent a good part of my day today, I'm, I'm trying to understand the resting screen architecture in the Mark II skill. Um, there's some of the Mark II still that's coming in the microc base skill um, class, and there's some stuff in the um, in the GUI enclosure stuff. So I'm bouncing around trying to figure out everything you know works together. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm trying to. Uh, there's two tickets right now in the sprint that actually we should should today should be the last day we work on it. I guess we can talk to Michael about that tomorrow when we see him. Um, Two tickets where if you reload um, the home screen, which I've done a lot of recently, <laughs> um, it, the screen goes blank. So, um, you know, making sure that the right things get hap happen with the resting screen handler um, when that skill gets reloaded. Also, something I noticed is that um, there's, there's the other ticket I'm working on related to this is that if there's an error in the home screen. Um, or any resting screen for that matter, that might would be my guess. Um, whatever is handling the resting screen continues to try to load it up over and over again. And that error, my device just gets stuck in a loop where it keeps telling me that I've got this, <laughs> this error with my home screen. Um, not something that should be a problem for our production device because they shouldn't be having that problem, but um, it's definitely something that should be fixed. Well, we'll talk about that when you're done. Well, yeah, and there's like, you know, people can make their own resting screens, home screens as well. So, yeah. you know, it's not just our own that we've got to worry about. Yeah. And I think it's tripping me up a little bit is there's a lot of comments in this code that says this should be part of the how. This should be part of the how. And I'm like, ooh, you know, how much of this do I really want to touch <laughs> yeah. if the how's coming up? But um, anyway, I'm still learning. Who we'll, we'll put those comments in there? Oh, I wonder. <laughs> was that you or me? <laughs> so I'm thinking of pretty sure it was Ken. All of us. So I, have, I, have three, I have three questions that are, some of them are related. The first is, are we sure that our bus still runs on Debian, by the way? Yes. Our method bus, the client? I, I run Debian on one of my machines. Uh, so. We rely on version, yeah, because we rely on version 54 of WebSocket client because of the dot app because of the app class but debian doesn't go all the way up to 54 i believe uh, uh and well, I think that's about to jump to one phenomenon. point one point something as well so what's that the websocket client that um python module is about to jump to one version one point something i'm just wondering if it's been tested on debian since we've modified the client didn't we just modify the client not that long ago uh, it hasn't, it's still running the old version at the moment on Microsoft Core, but there, there on are, the Mark two, uh, on the Mark two, it is still the old one. Yeah. Okay. So that was the first question I had the second question. So we, we know that it runs on Debian. That's good. Uh, the second question I have is something that Chris V brought up, uh, which is skill load order and inter-skill dependencies. Did I understand his comment correctly that we cannot control the order of skill load? We could. We don't right now. And if we did, we don't right now. That's that's very interesting. Well, so there's there's sort of there's I think two. It's an order. Just, <laughs> well, at the moment there there is a priority skills list. So like you can say this this needs to be loaded first, or these this set need to be loaded first, and then 
everything else loads. But I don't know what order within those two sets that things load. There's not much in the priority, only like two or three skills in the priority skill set. Pairing. Well, how do you how do you make sure that the pairing skill runs after the Wi-Fi skill? They're both in the um those are two of the skills in the priority list because they have to be there right And now. is the priority list a ordered list? They don't they don't know, they don't actually have to load in order. Okay. I, I think I've heard enough. And then the third question I had was this Mark II that with this build, I noticed um, that what I do with my Mark IIs is I rename Start Mycroft so that it doesn't automatically restart. Are you with me on that? Does that make sense? Yes. Because the, you, you rename the it. Start Mycroft script so that when when the things yeah, that so try to restart Mycroft restart. call that, it just yep, fails. Won't restart. So it just it. fails. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Up until a recent build, that was just fine. But sometime between the last build and two Thursdays ago's build, which I believe was dated 819 or 829 or something, mm -hmm. something changed. So now when I do that, it will automatically reboot after a certain period of time if Mycroft is not detected to be running. That surprises me. Were you aware of that? Yeah, it surprised me too, because it's a change in behavior. It was what we were discussing last week regarding a static image versus an unstatic image in all the different moving parts, one of which is the Pantacore underlying code. So you're saying if I if I jump on a Mark II now? If you go to your Mark II and you rename startmycroft.sh to foo.sh, and you stop Mycroft and let your Mark II sit there, it will magically reboot in about 10 or 15 minutes. And it didn't used to do that. Anyway, that's just the three questions I had because some things I was working on. Yeah, I can't think of what would be doing that. Like the... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was trying to get uh, something deployed that actually relied on that message bus and it didn't work on Debian. That was what alerted me to that. It was blown up on a couple of different imports. Well, so this is a, like a fully raw Debian image, is that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I Debian don't... puts things in different locations and so... You know, there's not everything you expect to be in your current virtual environment. And some of it's at the global level and yada, yada, yada. And then when it's at the global level and then your your local, uh, you know, virtual environment calls out for the new one, it gets confused as to which one to load and all that good stuff. So that's well, why, where I was kind of... Why, why is everything not loaded into the micro virtual environment? Well, that's a different question. And that's a different problem space. And so okay. that appears to be working, right? In other words, if you do that, then there's dependencies that I guess are sub-dependencies that are not being met by installing the module that have already been met by installed Mycroft. And that's kind of cheating. So I just wanted to understand why that was. That, that's where I was at. Okay. Um... In fact, I will, uh, I will probably pull an old Kivi image out and uh, or maybe I'll just burn a new Debian and uh, try it with Mycroft installed first, and then see if it works. Cool. Okay. Well, those are the questions I had. All okay. Right. Um, we also there's a question we need to be asking ourselves at every one of these meetings for a while, um, and that is, do we have any? Uh, skill updates to push today. Um, Good question. Because that's going to be a manual process yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. that you guys are going to do. And there's also release notes um, in Confluence that I want to keep up to date so that we can look back at and say, oh, well, this is why this is behaving this way. Nice. Or this is why it's broken or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, so 
that is my question. I don't have any I'm updated. hitting the home screen skill today um, with. Um, I don't have any. You don't have any? Okay. Um, no. I think the home screen skills, the only one I have to update right now, and that's just from code review remarks from Gez. The timestamp on the um, home screen right now is in UTC, which doesn't make a lot of sense um, considering. Well, because if you live in Greenwich Village. Well, yeah. <laughs> None of us do. So, yeah, that, that's now, but the build date's in UTC, so I was following that pattern, but it does make more sense for the skill update to be in local time. So, that is. Yeah, yeah. That's now in local time. And now I'll, I'll oh, push cool. that out. Cool, cool. Yeah, so build day will be in UTC, so we get, like, everyone can say the same thing, but the skills one is constantly changing anyway, so that's local. Cool. Well, it should only change once a day, but well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, you know what? I wonder if it should be local because isn't part of the reason we put it there so everybody can say this is the last one we can all match, match times on it? Yeah, maybe you might want to keep it in UTC. Because we that, that's the reason I put it there it was that so we could all say, oh, what what skill date are you running? We can if we don't hopefully all come up with the same answer. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I think it's I think you I think you're right. But it, it won't be to... it won't be the same answer anyway. It, it, well, it should be close. No, but, they'll, but they'll be relatively close, be close in time, won't they? It should it should be within an hour. In other words, that's what I'm getting at. At least you have a chance. Looks like this one went off at 147. Heaven knows when it started. Yeah, everyone's date should be the same. Let's oh, put it that way. Unless yeah, you're like, unless there's some midnight thing, thing going on, on. everyone's date should be the same. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Is that if you use UTC for both, then they're going to be within hours of each other, worst case, and so that'll make sense. Yeah, that's, mm. that's now that I think about it, I think I might revert that change. Yeah, maybe while we're doing this process, um, once once we switch back to just like you know pushing stuff whenever, then I feel like the local time makes more sense but i get what you're saying yeah well once i don't finish doing this process i may get rid of this the field this all together out of the scale i don't know it may not be even necessary the reason it's there is so we can all sync up and say oh this is a version i'm running hmm. well and it, sure it, it is stuff. it is you can hide it with that um development device flag or whatever yeah that's true stop All right, I'm going to revert that change before. So I, I mean, I may not push anything out out today from skills because that was that was the only thing I was. All your other changes, yeah, from the code review are non-functional, so they were just. Um, oh I yeah, think. I, so, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, I won't touch the home screen today. Then from the build. Cool. So yeah, no no build changes today. Okay, guess right. I might reach out to you tomorrow uh, to ask you to try the. Uh, the new loadable module, what I get once I get it up in the repository. Yeah, great. Cool. And, you know, all you have to do is change a config value and then reboot. Yeah. Um, and, uh, well, you might want to do like a pip install first and then a yeah. change yeah. a config value. At least working in an environment that has Mycroft previously installed. Um, that's probably really the, the goal, I guess. I was just trying to, you know, say, well, this would be nice if it could run on, you know, non mark two environments but i don't know if that's a priority today worst case they could always switch it back to precise and get the old binary it sounds like the airbus crew have been working on the same type of thing too like they maybe they you know we're, we're seeing the limitations of, of running everything in the in the full runner and they've been working towards the same kind of a thing is that right no so so they uh yeah so, so jarvis created module for the you know precise light runner i actually have that running on this mark too so this is running ovos whatever it's called precise light or i forget um so yeah he's already got that working the problem is that brings in a load of stuff from ovos mm -hmm. uh all its dependencies right so yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure when I give you this module tomorrow, it'll work. Cool. On a Mark II, theirs did. What I haven't tried is to pull theirs into a non Mycroft environment and see if it blows up in Debian as well. But you know, again, I'm just going above and beyond right now. I'll focus on the Mark II and leave it at that. All right. 
Um, I don't think there was anything else that I really needed to say. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to be working away at the, the high priority, um, sprint today. Oh, I did start working on the, um, the automated pushes from Minecraft core to the, to the Mark II build system. Um, initially I was doing it from GitLab, you know, to pull from, um, from Minecraft core, but realized that we have this perfect trigger scenario. So, um, now it'll be basically anytime, anytime you push to the, to the Mark II feature branch of Minecraft core, it'll, it'll trigger a new build of, of, um, the Mark II. Uh, that's the intention. It's not working yet, but, um, there's just a little bit of, you know, it's a little bit different to where we've done it, like where I did it in Adapt, for example, because that that was all within GitHub, so it was all using the, the GitHub API, um, whereas this is, yeah, across from GitHub to, to GitLab, so it's a little bit different, unfortunately. But um, hopefully that... I think that's awesome. Could you also add the capability sending out an email when somebody commits to the branch and it breaks? So, because that's what we used to get all the places I've been at is a nice email. Mm. Expensive to well, yeah, it will it will run the. You wrote the bill. Well, and, and so that that all exists on our on our mainline branch. The the problem is that we've been working on this feature branch and we haven't set up the same stuff for the feature branch. So. Um, oh, yes. is that right? If I push to feature Mark II and it breaks the build, I'll get an email. No, no. Like if you push to dev and it breaks the build, oh, then you will get an I email. See, um, and so we need to add the same stuff to feature mark two. I was kind of, you know, like because feature mark two is just this sort of quick, rapid, blah, blah, blah. Um, we didn't, we didn't add that stuff when we, we really should have like, you know, back at the start. Um, uh, and we are going to merge the feature mark two branch into dev. So I don't want to like spend too much time you know, building out CI infrastructure for something that's not going to exist in a couple of months' time. But um, given we're going to do all this skills interaction stuff, then, you know, kind of makes sense. Um, but, yeah, so the very, like, the, the unit tests will be easy. Um, and then we'll see about the... Um, the... Voigtkampf tests... Uh, cool. Anyway, that is everything from me. Well, that should be a wrap. Let's wrap it. All right, take it easy, guys. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye tomorrow.